Get ready for inspirational, motivational, purpose-driven conversation with Courtney Cottrell and Dr. Pat Vasily. This is Unapologetically Favored, a show where you will learn to be yourself, love yourself, and walk in your purpose without fear or worry. Courtney is a leader of many and a friend to all. She is a passionate speaker, author, and 21-year active duty master chief with the United States Navy, here to show you that obstacles are everywhere. But the moment you stop letting your setbacks define you, you start to see yourself in a brilliant new light. Find your confidence, own your power, and never apologize for who you are unapologetically favored starts now hello everyone i am courtney cottrell and you are listening to unapologetically favored on transformation talk radio stay with me for the next hour and let me help you shift your mindset from viewing life as an obstacle to seeing it as your greatest opportunity Each episode on Unapologetically Favored, we will have some of the best motivational and inspiring conversations, empowering you to become more confident, embrace your power, and allow you to walk in your purpose. Today, we are encouraging every one of you who are listening to shift your mind from negative to positive. And also with me today, I am so honored to have Dr. Pat in the flesh and blood, who is also a family member of the Transformation Talk Radio Network. Hey, Dr. Pat, how are you doing? I am so excited about this. I cannot even tell you. <laughs> I have been waiting to do this show with you. And, uh, and you know, today we're going to talk about life purpose, Right. Right. And the question really is, can we change our views? Can we remove obstacles? Can we look right. at opportunities? But, you know, in this episode, we're going to learn that. I want to ask you this question as we get rolling to talk about to mind or not to mind. I want to talk about unapologetically favored because oh, yes. that right there, Courtney Cottrell, oh, yes. how to walk in your purpose. I want to stop for a moment. I want to tell everybody something. I am just so jazzed about this. And let me tell you about, let me tell you about Courtney. (laughs) I get to work with with Courtney. I get to just be in conversation with Courtney. I -hmm. get to talk about how you're going to shape the show. Here's Mm -hmm. what you're going to find out. So if you can imagine having an inspirational, motivational, purpose-driven conversation with your best friend. So being told what you need to hear or not need to hear right that is tuning in to unapologetically favored this show this show courtney control we're talking about this this is where people will learn you're going to learn to be yourself you're going to learn to love yourself you're going to learn to walk in your purpose without fear without worry because courtney's this she's a leader of many and a friend to all active duty united states navy master chief yes the author of unapologetically favored a woman a leader a testimony motivational book wake up turn up bless up beautifully (laughs) inspiration for her this is what we fasten your seatbelts is what i'm about to say to everybody right here because here's what courtney's about to say when you stop worrying about what others think and yeah. start walking in your purpose and you allow yourself to grow you allow yourself to discover all yeah. of the gifts everything you have offered to her when you do that everything begins to shift today's episode everything begins to shift from uncertainty to possibilities and confidence your personal power never apologize for who you are let's do it courtney yes you know what i have never had an introduction like that but oh my goodness i'm gonna put you in my pocket and take you everywhere with me i love that i don't even know what to say right now i'm just so hmm, so humble oh yes but everything you said the purpose and the power and the drive and motivation um, you know, I am a true firm believer that everything happens in your life for a reason. And, but it, your mindset contributes to that as well. And you can either walk through life with a negative mindset, blaming everything 
you know, that doesn't go the way you think it should go on other people, or you can take accountability, own up to it, have a growth mindset and open mindset and say, you know what, what do I need to do to fix myself or to look at this situation, this circumstance with, with another vision that's going to help me get to the next level, take the next step. It's going to help me enroll back in college or go ahead and buy that house or start that company or just, you know, quit the job that I couldn't stand for 20 years. What is going to get me there? And it all starts with the mindset and not worrying what other people think, learning how to be unapologetic for your life circumstances and, you know, who you are as a person and just just walking in your purpose once you find that. And the way to your purpose is to find what your passion in life truly, truly is. And that is what we are going to talk about today. I'm so happy to have you here with me. This is going to be a wonderful thing. Yeah. So I do have one question that I do want to ask you as, you know, as we start going through this, you know, when we talk about shifting the mindset from negative to positive, for you, Dr. Pat, you know, how would you do that if I said you need to, to figure out how to how look at things a little bit better or with a little more positive vision? How would you go about doing that? All right. So if you'd asked me that question a bunch of years ago, okay, so let's just talk <laughs> about where, where I was, where I am now, right? Yes. Okay, because I'm going to give you the short answer because it's going to be really short. Back in the day, if you'd have asked me that when I was growing up, when I was a kid and I was a teenager, you know, I had outlets, right? Mm -hmm. My outlet when I was in my twenties, you know, I was either playing table tennis or I was drinking and using. Okay. That's a truth confession. That doesn't work. Okay. That is not (laughs) how you shift mindset, but I'm saying, but I did something to try to do it. I didn't have the tools I had today, but Mm -hmm. I had a lot of angels help me. One of the things that I know is when you realize you're not walking this planet alone, and you are divinely guided, divinely guided. Yes. When you have a sense of that, you can develop that and mm-hmm. you can learn to mind or not to mind. And I want to just say this to you. I learned the hard way, even after starting the show, Courtney, even after starting the show, I doubted myself six months mm-hmm into this 18 years ago i doubted myself and i came down with a mystery disease and that mystery disease that shifted my perspective Mm -hmm. that pointed me in a direction to find people that could help me and i changed the entire landscape of the show i the show was do you know what the show was called what don't be laughing now but you can laugh (laughs) google it crust busting your way to an awesome life that was the show name because i was so laid over and i'm telling you i entered into this world excited about possibilities Mm -hmm. but i doubted myself now can you imagine what kind of shift in mindset shift i needed to have because my soul pathway was laid out for me Mm -hmm. and i was going to stop doing it And I got so sick, Courtney, that I could not do anything else but this. And I say, thank you. So back in the day, I had a lot of tools. Today, 70 times a day, I commit every 70 days to minimally 70 times a day for 70 days. I say, thank you, God. And that is the God of your understanding. That is whatever you believe. Right. You know, I have a friend that's Muslim. You know, Mm -hmm. she thanks you. She has a different thank you. A lot. She has her own words around that. My table tennis player is East East Indian. She has her way of doing it. But whatever that way is, if you can get your mind to be thank you, thank you, thank you, and you're going like this, like a bobblehead, right? Hallelujah for that. Right. What do you do? <laughs> so you know, it was. I, I think it was always. You know, when I talk about the story in my book about how I came up with unapologetically favored, and I in a there's a spot in there where I talk about. I had a, a, a mental breakdown, like I had a breakdown, but that breakdown allowed me to have a breakthrough because sometimes, you know, the, we don't have pressure release valves and that pressure release valve is what you need in life to like get your feelings and your emotions out, get your anger out. You know, it kind of, that pressure release that you, when you don't have it and you're just bothering about this pressure, that pressure, that stress, that anxiety, that fear, 
all of that will make you sit down real quick. It'll make you sit down and pause your life. And that's when you end up thinking about everything you've been through, you become overwhelmed and all your emotion comes flooding out. But then once it's over with, it's like your, your, your spirit is light, your soul is just fluffy again, and you see life through clearer glass now. You can see, you can see everything. And for me, I think just, you know, when I had to shift my mind or shift in my mind from the negative to the positive, you know, it was that moment having that breakdown for me is honestly what did it. Because before that, you know, being uh, a lesbian woman, black woman in the military, it was a struggle. So I felt like people were against me. I felt like I was going to be judged. I was going to be talked about. I was going to be shamed and not allowed to do certain things or not allowed for certain positions or I'll never make it because I've never seen a black master chief, you know, at that time. That's not for me because they're not. So my mindset was always negative. But then when I had that breakdown, it was, I can't put this on other people. I can't put on other people my fears because it's not their problem, it's mine. So I need to reevaluate my thinking process. I need to reevaluate the way that I am conducting myself and making other people feel comfortable or uncomfortable around me. Because I always think, you know, if somebody's uncomfortable around you, that's probably because you're making them that way. People react to their environment. So that's just something to think about. Um, but I had to change who I was and, and instead of looking at negativity all the time and thinking with negative thoughts, I had to learn how to embrace and think more positive and say, you know what? Every setback is a setup for a major comeback. I had to change that thought process and allow myself to just say, you know what? This is who I am. If you don't like me, I don't care. I wasn't born into this world to be your specific best friend, you know, and just embrace who I was and love me first. And then the positive just started rolling into my life. Cause I just feel like if you start thinking positive, if you start embracing and loving who you are, everything starts at the core. Yeah. And from there, it kind of just builds itself out. And then everything around you becomes different. It just becomes more positive, vice negative, you yeah. know? Yeah. I wanted to say this, like, we're going to, we're going to skip the break. Cause we're going to roll into this, Courtney. You know, one of the things you talk about is don't sink your soul by allowing negative thoughts to weigh you down. All right. Let's right. just, let's just get on this right now Yes, because we need this now. Yes. If we ever needed something like this, can I share a, a little tidbit with you? This oh. happened really recently. Okay. I, I connected with somebody who wanted to do a show with us, mm -hmm. right? Call me. And said, really love your platform, love the people that are on the show. And I'm thinking about doing my podcast. And I understand you have TV now, really excited about it. And she said, you know, but I'm I, 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 just a little bit concerned about you. Like, you know, so, I, so I, I just did a little research. I listened to a couple of your shows. Like, like, is everybody over there gay? And I'm like, yeah, I heard the show where you're talking about like you were at Stonewall and, you know, like I heard like, so it's, it's like, is this like a LGBTQ network? And I said, okay, what if it is? Right. You know, like what's bothering you? Well, you know, like the program, I said, I'm not even going to tell you the rest of the conversation. You could fill in the blank yourself. Right. I said, you know, <laughs> that was me talking about Stonewall. And I got to tell you, it sounds like, you know, you're not a really a good fit for us because we're like an all network. Right. We're like all. Right. We're like everybody. We're like, you, you can come in here and do a show with us, right? The perspective. Mm -hmm. But I thought to myself, Am I having this conversation in 2021 with somebody, Courtney? Right. right. I think if I'd have had that conversation when I was younger, let's talk about what happens with life experience when we allow mm -hmm. negative thoughts to weigh us down. Mm -hmm. Are we able to achieve? Can we receive? Are we able to, you know, understand the possibilities? Tell us about don't sink your soul by allowing negative thoughts. 
So I saw that and I thought it was like a really, really good conversation to mm. because, you know, just like in today's time, we're talking about, you know, like 2021, right? 2020 <laughs> has just been a doozy. It just blindsided everybody, you know, and it's kind of really made us like without choice, just to kind of revamp everything, the way we live, how we speak to people, even, you know, do, teaching classes, kids are doing virtual online schooling. It's just crazy right now. And we are so consumed with social media. We're so consumed in politics. We're so consumed with, you know, worrying about the way we look, how we're being perceived. If somebody's going to like me, why well, don't have, you know, this many likes or attention on social media or, and we don't realize that all that negativity can sink you as a person because you become so overwhelmed with it that it just hugs you. That negativity just hugs you and you find yourself depressed because you're constantly comparing who you are to the next person or you're constantly depressed because everything you saw on the news was so negative that now you're on the defense when you go to Home Depot or Lowe's because you're scared that somebody's going to, going to approach you in a negative way. You're so much on a defense, you know, if you're a teenager and your kids and your parents come home because you're like, you know, and you start yelling at me, I didn't do anything because, oh, parents aren't supposed to yell at their kids. You just, you don't realize how much negativity just hugs you and holds you and embraces you. And we have to realize and, and see for ourselves, are we doing that? You know, so like to all the listeners who are listening right now, think about that in your life right now. How much social media are you allowing to drive the negativity in your life? You know, your family life at home, your, your job, your coworkers, are you allowing that negativity to just sink you to the point you go home and you're like, you don't, you're done for the day. You're mentally drained. You want to lay on the couch. You don't want to do anything because you've given all your energy to this negative entity, whatever that negative entity and it has just drained you. Negativity will sink your soul. It will sink you as a person. And that was my thought process. Yeah. Look, I, I, I love certain kind of like TV shows, right? So mm -hmm. I love Killing Eve. I love that show, but I love it because I love Sandra O. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I just want to throw something at you because I love this quote from her because it really talks to you, Courtney, and what you do and what you're about. And she's saying, talking about 20, sometimes the future changes quickly and completely and we're left with only the choice of what to do next. Right. We can choose to be afraid of it, just stand there trembling, not moving, assuming the worst that can happen, or, or we can step forward into the unknown and assume it will be brilliant. Right. That's what we're talking about today. Yes, that is exactly what we're talking about. Just, just being able to take that step forward and, you know, just, just shifting that mindset, stop thinking that everything bad is going to happen. Because when you start thinking that way, you believe it to be your reality and it holds you back from being the best, the very best version of yourself. You know, you got to, when your mind is everything, if you walk into a situation and you know, or in your head, you're like, you know what, I'm the best person for this job. If you say that to yourself, affirmations, morning after morning after morning, when you walk into that job interview, it's going to exude itself. It's going to, you're going to look like you're the best person for that job. Now you might not even have any idea what this job is about, but your appearance, that your, your, your character, your everything, your aura is going to present itself as being the best person for this job. But we have to stop being scared to take that next step, that next journey and say, you know what? It's going to work out for my good. And if it doesn't, and you feel like you've been rejected, just think of rejection being a part of your protection because that probably wasn't meant for you at that moment. But it's all in your mindset, shifting everything from negative to positive. And you know, we're talking to here, uh, not only about looking at our life experiences and really looking how we come forward, but we're talking about, let's get on this one. We're talking about limiting beliefs. And what I mean by this, and I love the conversation on limiting beliefs because beliefs are like powerful. Right. They're powerful. Right. Right. I mean, I was talking to somebody the other day and she was like, I am never going to lose these 20 pounds. I just, you know, like everybody says it's a COVID thing and the 20 pounds and I don't know, I'm never going to lose it. And I just like my, I, my head was going to explode and she's close to me. And I said, 
okay, okay, all right. So you, you're telling me you're never going to lose those 20 pounds. And I said, I got to ask you a burning question. Do you even want to lose them? I mean, are you just telling me you're never going to lose them? Or do you not want to lose them? And she said something interesting to me. I'm not sure what I think. I don't know if I really want to lose them or that I believe that no matter what I do, I'm not going to lose them. Or even if I work really hard and I get on my elliptical that I have 10 feet away from me, I don't think I'm going to lose them because I think I've aged. Now we got a belief. Right, because she's older, she's not going to lose her weight. There you go. This is really what we're talking about. There's a belief underneath all this. Can you talk right. about that? Because these beliefs get infiltrated in the, you know, pill, potion, lotion, what we see on television. Yeah. All of a sudden, somebody says, you've just turned this, therefore, you're not going to be able to do this. Tell us about limiting yeah. beliefs. What did you do to bust through yours? Well, it's you know, a lot of people, they don't even, they probably don't even recognize it. And I've asked this question when I do um, like leadership classes and everything within the Navy for leadership. And I've asked people, you know, do you know, have you ever heard of limited beliefs? And a lot of people will say no. And I'll explain it to them. Uh, and uh, limited beliefs are the things that you probably don't even realize you have it, but we all have a limited belief some way, somehow. And it can go from whether it being passed down through your family or it's just inherited by society or you know what you've been how you've been raised everybody has a limited belief that is just a little fence line in your brain that you're holding up that's telling you you can't go no further than these boundaries you can't achieve this position because it's not meant for women you can't go to college because nobody in your neighborhood in your family in your city has ever achieved anything or went to college. You can't be successful in the Navy because you weren't supposed to even be there because you weren't supposed to amount to anything. So when you're growing up like that, it becomes a permanent fixture in your brain and you're trying to figure out why you can't get ahead because you unconsciously have this belief that you cannot break past a certain boundary because of the way you were raised, the things that you were taught, what you have seen. So individually, it's up to an, one person, an individual to say, you know what? I can't do this. You're not going to tell me what I can or cannot do in my life. It's up to me to make that decision. And I did, you know, back in March, I had the opportunity to speak to um, one of the enable ship for um, Women's History Month. And what part of my speech I asked, speaking to the females, I said, you know, as you move up in leadership positions, whether it's in the corporate world or in the military, finding female leadership, top female leadership becomes really, really, really thin. And everything is meant for everybody. So when you're sitting back and you're saying, well, I can't do this because I've never seen a female do that. Or I can't do this because nobody from my ethnicity has ever done that. Maybe that position was waiting on you to shatter that glass ceiling. Maybe that was supposed to be your purpose in life. But because your limited beliefs are holding you back, you will never know. So when you find yourself saying, I can't go to college, what is holding you back? I can apply for this position. What is holding you back? The fear of the unknown? Or is it because you have never seen anybody like you do it or you've been told you were not a fit for it? You know, so limited beliefs. Oh, my goodness. Those a lot of people don't realize how deep that is. And that is ultimately the core of their problem because they just don't realize you can do whatever you want to do. I was do I did a study a bit ago and uh, I just want to say this before we go to break. I, you know, you know what today is? Today is one of them days that for women and I work with women and you work with women, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and there's just a new level of awareness I find myself doing. I find myself just making everybody aware as a woman, you think you have equal rights, you don't. Mm -hmm. And the poll I did a couple of months ago, just asking folks about, I said, do you believe that you have the right to equal pay? And everybody, yeah, like, oh, yeah, we do. Right. <laughs> and I said, do you believe you don't now? And they said, yeah, we know we're not. And I said, do you know that the Congress passed an equal pay bill that went to the Senate? You could hear a pin drop. I said, do you know what the vote was in the Senate for you? to have equal pay. 
you could hear a pin drop. Mm -hmm. No one knew that the Senate vote on giving women equal pay was turned down. It was voted down. I had a room full of people that didn't know that. And today, by the way, is National Women's Equality Day. That's what it's yes. called. But that is so far from reality. But it yes. is still called that. Mm -hmm. Because on that day, a 19th Amendment to the Constitution granting women full and equal voting rights happened in 1920. And I want to talk with you about this when we come back. I don't know any woman that has stood up and fight for a right any woman that has stood up and fought for something about who they were and what they needed to achieve. Mm -hmm. I don't think I know any man that has done that, that wasn't fully so embedded in the strength of conviction about what they believed was right for them. Because it drives us, it motivates us, it but it could stop us short. It could limit us. And it could tell yourself and your mind, you're not worth it. When we come back, right. we're going to talk about that. Yes. How can we help all of you listening to know you're worth it? And if you don't know that you just did not get equal pay because <laughs> the Senate voted this down, because some of the senators said it's going to cause too many frivolous lawsuits. Newsflash, Courtney equal pay lawsuits are not frivolous when we come back right. right if you're standing in your no you need to know why courtney's joining us here today when we come back you're going to find out a lot about her about her books how you can contact her all of the above we're going to take a short break benny and jamie will be right back I love it. We're back. For those of you out there, just get ready for this because this is a this is a show that you're going to be hearing a lot about. Unapologetically favored with Courtney A. Cottrell. Walk in your purpose, life purpose. Can you change your views in life from obstacles to opportunities? Yes, you can. And this is really what Courtney does. This is what she stands for. This is the way she walks her path in life. Now, before we go ahead and we start to talk a little bit about the no, I can tell you a lot about rejection. How do people find out about you? How do they find out about the work you do? How do they find out and get copies of the books? Tell us everything. Everything. So I'll give you everything minus my birth date. So um, to contact <laughs> me, I am on every social media platform that is out there. I am on Facebook under Unapologetically Favored. I am on um, Twitter, uh, I am on Pinterest, well, Pinterest and um, Instagram as well. And just to make it easy, you can go to unapologeticallyfavored.com and actually reach all my social media as well as buy my books and be on the lookout for the third motivational, inspirational book coming out later this year. So you're on a purpose and you're on fire. You are. <laughs> And, you know, the reason I love talking about this and talking with you is because you and I have something in common. Mm -hmm. We have been rejected at various point in times in our life. Right. And I say the word rejected for a reason, because that is the way I felt. Mm -hmm. I felt rejected. I, I'll tell you what, I've been fired from every job I've ever had. That's actually good news. Mm -hmm. uh, and fired for reasons of what I believed in and who I was. Now I want to talk about what we do with that rejection. You know, Courtney, my boss, Dr. Roz doctor, wanted me to fire somebody one month away from a full pension. And something took over my body. You know, I was an executive making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I looked at her and I said, I'm not doing it. Now, I went off and applied for a lot of schools. Sometimes people say no. Sometimes you hear no. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you do with your no. So when I hear the word no, and I shared this with um, a girlfriend of mine yesterday, uh, I said, you know, when somebody tells you no, to me, it just means next opportunity. 
because everything in our life, you know, my, my thought process and Courtney's thought process is already predestined. You know, where you're supposed to be, the people that you meet along your journey in life, were supposed to be there. It was supposed to happen. And if there is something that you are striving to achieve, you're striving to get, and you don't get it, it's okay. No, next opportunity, try again. And when I think about, you know, I was thinking about this conversation and I was going through things and I said, you know, how many times have the celebrities that we know of, that we see, how many times have they been told no, and, but their persistence, their dedication, their desire, their commitment to keep going, to keep chiseling a little bit more through that mountain just to get to the other side, just to keep going on the other, to get to the other side of that fear because that's where their ultimate success came from. It was over that hump of fear, you know? And I had did some research and I said, you know, I'm gonna share this with everybody. And I started going through and I said, you know, they, the Beatles were once rejected by Decca Recording Studios because the recording studio didn't like their music. And now they're like one of the most renowned like music groups out there. Like who does not know about the Beatles? <laughs> Lady Gaga, she was told she wasn't pretty enough to be a singer, but she's gorgeous like to me. Like I love the fact that she is unapologetic about her style and who she is and what she brings to the table. I love her. We all know Oprah Winfrey. She was demoted from being a news anchor because she wasn't fit for television, whatever that means. And now she's a billionaire, you know, and, and the list goes on and on. But what if those people, those individuals would have stopped because somebody told them no? Where would they be right now? And for all the listeners, that's the same question, you know, we wanna to pose to you. Where would you be right now had you not stopped? And if you are that person right now in your life that has stopped, how much further along in life could you be had you kept going? Don't be so quick to give up. That instant gratification will kill you every time. Yeah, uh, this what you're talking about is so important. And there's so many people, you know, that we can point to people that were told no directly. And then other people were just, you know, I love the idea of being directly told no. Right. That is so much better than being in a situation where things are just not happening in your favor and nobody's telling you they're really <laughs> like you're in the no box, right? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. So we have to, we have to really acquire, Courtney, we have to acquire some skills. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to look at our lives and say, wait a minute, I am trudging here. Right. I'm just like beating the pavement here. Right. And something doesn't feel right. You know, do I feel great enough about myself in order to make the move that will get me to the place I want to go. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't have a belief in that, what happens? You, you know, like my thought, like you're never going to get anywhere. You're never going to get anywhere. If you don't believe that you can do something, if you don't feel like you are worthy or if you are valuable, people are going to treat you. They're going to treat you the way you treat yourself, first of all how you treat you, yourself, how you hold yourself, you know, the way you kind of bust it out into the world, that's how people are going to receive you and they're going to treat you accordingly. So if you feel like you don't have value, if you feel like you're not worthy enough, if you're not smart enough, strong enough, confident enough, what, it, let's can go on. If you don't feel like you have it in you, nobody's going to believe that about you either. Nobody's going to believe that. So it starts with you. You have to understand that, you know, we are just like, a torn dollar bill. If that dollar bill is ripped up into shreds, we will do everything we can to tape it back together and we can still spend it because it still has value. You as an individual, as a person, as a human, you have that same value. When you are broken, when you are feel like you're set back, when you feel like life is just dealing you blows after blows after blow, you still have value. You're still worthy get up and make something of yourself. You know, you, you can't continue to sit down and, 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 and play the, the blame game, the victim game. I tell people, you get one day to be in your feelings. One day. <laughs> after Because you need that pressure release valve. You need to get your emotions out. So you get one day. After that day, your feet gonna hit that pavement, get back to grinding, figure out where you messed up at, and now is your time to recover. Recover. It wasn't a setback. It wasn't a failure. 
It's only a failure if you fail to get back up. Once you stand back up on your own two feet, baby, you are back in the game. Let's go. But you have to want that for yourself and know that you are worthy of all of that, no matter what people tell you. And it all just starts on the inside of you. Let's go right to this too, because I want to keep rolling. Let's talk about now here we are. How do you build a life of opportunity? How do you look at these challenges in life as obst- uh, opportuni- uh, opportunities, not obstacles? You know, I love something that happened to me when I was in my early 20s. I love this thing that happened to me. I started to play a sport that I loved and I really wasn't very good at it, mm-hmm. but I loved it. And I, I was started to compete in these little competitions in New Jersey. And the club owner came up to me one day and said, you know, you're working really hard at this, but you're actually learning a sport that people learn when they're five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And you're like, like, what are you like? You're in your twenties. And I said, no, I'm like 20. (laughs) And and he said, that's what I said. You're in your (laughs) twenties. I remember this guy. And he said, you're never going to be able to play this well. You're never going to be able to compete well. You're too old. Oh, wow. And I loved him saying that to me. Because I said, you think I am going to show your sorry mm, Mm -hmm. about what I can do. Now, that's my personality. Now, sometimes... I've been able to move through it. And the series of events that happened after that are exactly what you talk about. I saw the opportunities. I even got injured and have a full cast. And my coach, Sam Hammond, he became number one national champion of Ghana, Africa, walked by, saw me practicing on a table, table tennis table, in a full length cast on my right leg. And that got his attention. And he walked over to me and he said, some accent, I got a picture of him. What, what are you doing? And I looked at him and I said, like, who are you? <laughs> and he said, what, what are you doing? I said, I'm practicing my serve. And he looked at me and he said, let me help you. Hmm. That became an opportunity. This is the number one player in Ghana. He was like 10th in the United States. He walked in with a big backpack that from New York to coach other people. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and he said, I'm in an accent. I'm going to help you. Mm -hmm. Pate, I'm going to help you. And I said, okay, I didn't get what he said. He meant he's going to help me every day that I come in. He's going to coach me. Now, stupid little story about a sport, about a little ball. But we need to look at things that set us back. And we need to learn today. Because, Courtney, I want you to roll with this now. We are living in a world where every day of our lives There is going to be something that pops up that's going to say to you, oopsie, another opportunity, but it's going to come in the form of a no, an Mm -hmm. obstacle, a challenge, or a Mm -hmm. setback. How do we get ready for it? So just understanding that, you know, you, you, your, your path in life, you walk in that according to your experience, you know, you don't wake up every day wanting to be rude or just being a bad person. Um, But, you know, understand that you cannot control people. You can only control your response and, you know, what you allow them to do to you emotionally. That's one way. Um, The second is just understanding your limited beliefs, you know, Figure out what that thing is that's holding you back. What's stopping you from seeing life in a more positive light? Is it, you know, because one person did one thing to you and now everybody's tarnished in your view. If that's the case, that was just that one person. That one person was probably that test that you needed in your life at that moment so that you could have a testimony. 
to say, hey, they told me I would never be great at this sport. But because I kept going, the next person took me under their wing and showed me the way. But had you just got mad at that one person and stopped when they said that you were not good, you know, would you have enjoyed, have enjoyed life? Would you have continued on with whatever it is that you wanted to do in life? You know, just understand everybody doesn't give a, get a trophy, which is a huge thing to me. And I think now it's, it's so important that we share that with our younger generation because everybody is not going to win at life. And it's okay. It is definitely okay. And that's that resiliency piece that I think is really, really missing. People don't know how to bounce back when something doesn't go the way they want it to go. They don't know how to come back for that, from that. So their ultimate response is to kind of just sit down and just go by the wayside, just kind of die out, fade out into the background because they lose that value. They lose that worthiness. They lose that confidence that they're you know, supposed to have. They just feel like they can't go on anymore. But for me, that those are just some of the things that you, know, you can do to kind of stay in the game to kind of shift your mindset from the negative to the positive, just your view in life and understand that it's gonna happen. But the responsibility and accountability is on you to ensure that you have a positive response to it and not a negative one. Yeah. Look at, there's so many more opportunities today for you to get an email that tells you, you know, tells you garbage, like you're not enough. You're going to fail if you try. You're a fake. You're a fraud. And, you know, in some of these emails and some of these, some of these imply, Courtney, this, right? They imply you're a loser. You're never going to be successful, right? Uh, You know, as a people, you should give up. You're like a nobody. How many times I can tell you if I, if you, I would get money for (laughs) every time somebody said to me along the way, give up you're never going to amount to anything. You're really not that smart. Mm -hmm. When I was a teenager, you stuttered. You're like, totally, you're a loser. You can't even get a sentence out. If we were to listen to that, we're not going to move. But your work and what you're doing is helping us do something else. Because you know what this stuff does? I want you to comment on this. Robs us of our opportunities, robs us of our self-worth, and robs us of time and freedom. And it robs us of money. So what you're talking about is really to say, hold up everybody. That is just a bunch of garbage, right? It is. It it really is. And, and people don't understand, like when you, when you fold into that, when you allow that negativity to sink your soul, going back to that, you don't realize how many blessings you miss, how many opportunities you miss because you allow one thing to hold to hold you back from achieving achieving what you want. And I earlier, you know, I called one of my high school girlfriends to wish her a happy birthday. And, and she was all ecstatic about me doing this podcast. And, you know, when I told her, I said, yeah, I said, well, you know, the question was presented to me like a year or two ago, and I kind of wasn't really there yet. I was like, I don't know, and I would do it. And, and you know, just kind of simmering on the idea, I said, you know, there's a reason why this is happening right now. And, why you, you, you are consumed with negative thoughts. And I said, well, what do you have to lose? Nothing. If the things that I've been through have been a mess. And I say, you have to go through a mess in your life in order to have a message for somebody else. And if I don't take this opportunity to do it, I could be missing out on my blessing. I could be blocking a blessing that was meant for me. And while I'm out here asking for things in life, like, oh, dear Lord, if you just give me this one opportunity, I will do X, Y, and Z. But like, I want to do something. I want to, you know, just help other people. And that goes for anybody listening. When you ask for something, be careful what you ask for, because when it presents, your, when the opportunity presents itself, you have to be ready. You have to understand, know, and see what that's going to look like because you have no, you you really have no idea what it's going to look like, but you will get it. But because we're so scared and and fearful of the word no, or the rejection or the limits of beliefs are holding us back, we'll just, I don't don't want to do it. I I, I can't do it. No, I don't want to do that. But that might've been that opportunity. That might've been that positive opportunity 
right then at that moment while you're over here thinking about your life being an obstacle, you were presented with this opportunity, but you allowed that negativity to sink your soul to the point that you couldn't even see the opportunity presented in front of you. Like it's deep. It's really, really heavy. Yeah. I mean, and that's really, this is really, as we're talking through this, let's just get right at it. Right. We could train our thoughts. Right. We can train our thoughts to know in your words, this is in your words, Courtney, everything has a purpose. We can train right. our thoughts. I want you to talk to that, but also look, these circumstances, if we let them pull us out, if mm -hmm. they, if we let circumstances in our lives define us, mm -hmm. see, that's what's going on. You mm -hmm. could let a, you could get let a job loss define you for right decades to come or you could let maybe failure this is not you failure to go through an obstacle physical obstacle course right mm -hmm. to achieve something so how do we train our thoughts to know that everything has a purpose so well we really didn't get into it with like the growth and fixed mindset you know start trying to have that more growth mindset a more open mindset when somebody's presenting ideas, you know, or change or uh, just having a conversation, be a little bit more open, be prepared for rough times. They're going to happen, you know, at least one time in your life, you know, see the lesson in everything that's presented to you in life. Know that everything is not a set or not an attack on you. A lot of us take a lot of things personal, but, you know, things in life are not a personal attack on you. Everybody doesn't get a trophy. That's just a a thing for me like everybody doesn't get a trophy you know control your negative thoughts reflect on why you believe more in the negative than you do the positive what is driving that thought process is start on um, start peeling back the layers of that onion in the mornings or throughout the day repeat positive affirmations because we're working on changing your mindset to be more positive so if you wake up in the morning and you post sticky notes in your card on your car dashboard on your mirror Send yourself text message alerts, you know, set an alarm to, to give you positive affirmations that you're beautiful, you're confident, you're strong, you're wise, you can do anything you put your mind to. Do that to kind of release the pressure in your life and kind of, you know, reset you on your course. Conquer your fears, conquer your fear of the unknown. That is something that we have, it's hard to kind of bust through, but, you know, if you're scared of failure, then you're scared of success because it is going to happen. Never fear rejection because that's going to happen. Like it just, it is what it is. And, you know, understand that the word no only means next opportunity. And also rejection can be for your protection because maybe that situation or that relationship or that job or that, you know, house or, you know, that degree was not meant for you. It was not a part of your life. That rejection just saved you from unhappiness from abuse, from, you know, a loss in your paycheck, that rejection saved you. But again, it all goes back to having that open mindset, trying to see the lesson that's in that. And, you know, for me, I feel like once you're able to kind of lock that down and, and, and practice that every day, practice that every day, it becomes a part of who you are. And then eventually, when you change the way that you see things, the things that you see will ultimately change. Yeah. You know, I want to do this. I know we got a few minutes less on, left and I want to wrap up with this because this is something I've heard you talk about. I've read it. Let's just talk about the importance of trusting the process, you know, oh. because I, let's wrap this up for the next few minutes we have, because trusting the process is the greatest gift we have right. as human beings, isn't it? Right. Oh, yes. And for me, you know, personal story, it was when I had that, that, that breakdown and I said, okay, you know what? I'm just going to trust the process. So again, going back to, I believe everybody that is in your life at different points of your life are placed there for a reason. So I started allowing people to just kind of come in and mentor me, give me advice, recommendations, constructive criticism, you name it, because one, a lot of them were all senior to me. And if they're trying to help me, maybe they see something in me that I didn't see in myself. And human nature, we don't invest in people who we feel are not going to give us a return on our investments. 
we mentor those, those individuals, we talk and train, and we are there for those individuals who we know will receive what we're given. So I allowed myself to kind of be used uh, as a vessel to, to train and learn and, and watch and see um, what these individuals had to offer me, what my, my mentors had to offer me. And from there, you know, my vision became a little clearer. I started seeing like, okay, you know what? These group of people over here aren't really my friends or I can't trust you. Okay, you're going hard on me because you know I'm I can do better than what I'm doing. And you know, you're taking your time to get me on the right track. So I'm gonna keep you in my life. But it's a reason for everything. And through that, trusting all those people, trusting the path and not getting mad when I didn't win an award and not getting mad when you know my job at one point was taken away from me or when I failed, you know, a, a body fat weigh-in in the Navy. And they took me away from my job and put me somewhere else. I did not get mad. I looked at the situation and said, what is this about? There's something in here. There's a lesson that I need to learn. You're, you're, something is speaking to me saying, this isn't for you. We're going we're gonna to record, re revamp you, put you back on the right course so that you can get to your ultimate destination. Now, had I fought back, had I sat in the corner and just, lived in my feelings, you know, for more than just that one day <laughs> that I wanted to really sit in traffic. Had I just sat in my feelings, you know, and, and not got back up, would I be here right now? Yeah. Would yeah. things have worked out for my good? Would I have written two books on my way to the third? Would I be asked to come speak to other people and give them my testimony and my message from the tests and the messes that I went through? I had to trust the process. And I tell people, once you trust in the process, it's just taking your hands off the wheel and just go. You know, wherever you end up at, however you get there, that's where you're supposed to be. You know, and that's how I feel with life sometimes. You know what? Right now, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm tired. I can't make it. But I'm taking my hands off the wheel. Whoever you believe in, they got it. Let them drive it. And they're going to get you to where you need to go, but you got to let go. We want to control everything and we want instant gratification. And it's an Amazon prime life and everybody want to order it today, get it tomorrow. And you can't do that. You know, it takes time. It's not an overnight delivery process, but take, take your hands off the wheel for a second. Trust yeah. the people that are around you, you know, yeah. stop holding yourself back thinking that you can't, I'll never will be able to, I can't do Yes, you can. And yes, you will. It's just a shift in the mindset. Courtney Cottrell, everybody. I love this. You know, when you take your hand off the wheel, then you really step into this beautiful place. And thank you for reminding us that. Again, Courtney, uh, everybody out there, unapologeticallyfavored.com. You're going to hear more from Courtney coming up here. Oh, you yeah. know, next time, maybe we'll talk about like when you take their hands off the wheel. Ooh. Yep. Get ready for the ride <laughs> of your life. Instagram unapologetically, right? C A K. You know? Unapologetically C A K on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, yep. Facebook unapologetically favorite. And by the way, get a hold of Courtney. Check in with Courtney. And oh, Courtney, yeah. we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Wow. What a great show, everybody. A lot here. Please, hands off the wheel. Let's go. We'll see you next yeah. time. Thanks for tuning in to Unapologetically Favored. When you stop worrying about what others think and start walking in your purpose, you allow yourself to grow, you discover all the gifts you have to offer the world, and everything begins to shift from uncertainty to possibility. Can't get enough? Unapologetically Favored is also a book. Bring home a copy and learn more about Courtney by visiting unapologeticallyfavored.com. We will see you right here next time. And until then, keep walking in your purpose.